Good morning, friends. This is the 1st of November, 2018. On contemplating the ever-threatening, pitiful, Mongol-bred, complex-laden wannabe Turks to the east of us, the Slavic peasants to the north who want to establish their own non-identity with a chunk of our own Macedonian history, and the ignorant Albanian simpletons whose current antics are the result of the perennial chip on their overshadowed shoulders. We Greeks must realize that we are condemned to have clowns to the left of us and jokers to, to our right. A few days ago, a young Greek who was celebrating a national holiday in a Greek village within Albanian borders was provoked and officially murdered by a police force of at least 200 mobilized men. Slavs in Skopje systematically burned Greek flags because we do not accept them as the descendants of Alexander the Greek's legacy. The Turks, to the east of us, who brutally slaughtered thousands of Greeks and Armenians in the 20th century, true to their expansionist Mongolic tradition, claim Homer and all the Ionian philosophers to be theirs. Whilst today it even threatens Greece with annihilation if it dares to implement its rights to the Aegean. What those three have in common is that they have not contributed an iota to human civilization. However, as Greeks, we are condemned to be the descendants of those that have left their marks so deeply engraved in all that is beautiful on the planet that we will forever be the recipients of the hatred that broken in, domesticated animals feel for the tamers. And to prove this, all one needs to do is to take out the Greek words and roots from his or any civilized language in the world. The result, it would simply cease to function. It would stop functioning in a civilized context. And nothing is more representative of this linguistic tool with which we have tamed humanity than this English text that I will read to you, written by our ex-Prime Minister Zolotas, comprised solely of borrowed Greek diction. Conjunctions, modals, and prepositions aside, it's all Greek diction. The text is also an answer to those that whimsically claim that English is the richest language of the world. If you took Greek away from it, it would not even be able to say telephone. So here's the text. Brace yourselves. Here it goes. It only takes one minute for me to read this. The genesis of classical drama was not symptomatic. A euphoria of charismatic and talented protag protagonists showed fantastic scenes of historic episodes. The prologue, the theme, and the epilogue comprised the trilogy of drama, while synthesis, analysis, and synopsis characterized by the phraseology of the text. The syntax and phraseology used by scholars, academicians, and philosophers in their rhetoric had many grammatical idioms and idiosyncrasies. The protagonists periodically used pseudonyms. Anonymity was a syndrome that characterized the theatrical atmosphere, the panoramic fantasy, the mystique, the melody, the aesthetics. The use of the cosmetic epithets are characteristics of drama. Even though the theaters were physically gigantic, there was no need for microphones because the architecture and the acoustics would echo isometrically and crystal clear. Many epistemologists of, of physics, aerodynamics, acoustics, electronics, electromagnetics cannot analyze, explain the ideal and isometric acoustics of Hellenic theaters even today. There were many categories of drama, classical drama, melodrama, satiric, epic, comedy, etc. The syndrome of xenophobia or dyslexia was overcome by the pathos of the actors who practiced methodically and emphatically. Acrobatics were also euphoric. There was a plethora of anecdotal themes with which the acrobats would electrify the ecstatic audience with scenes from mythical and historical episodes. Some theatric episodes were characterized as scandalous and blasphemous. Pornography, bigamy, hemophilia, nymphomania, polyandry, polygamy, and heterosexuality were dramatized in a pedagogical way so that the mysticism about them would not cause phobia or anathema or taken as anomaly, but through logic, dialogue and analysis, skepticism, and the pathetic or cryptic mystery behind them 
would be dispelled. It is historically and chronologically proven that theatre emphasized pedagogy, idealism, and harmony. Paradoxically, it also energized patriotism, a phenomenon that symbolized ethnically character and phenomenal heroism. That was an English text written solely in Greek, Greek words, words that have been borrowed into all languages, and I dare say even those of our neighbors, not to mention their alphabets. So besides the Greek origin of the Latin and Slavic alphabets, the Greek words in the text that I have just received have for the most part also been borrowed, as I said, by the rest of the world, even in far down uh, as deep in, in age of, uh, as Asia. How would you be able to tell, uh, express uh, a notion like harmony or even music, which is, which, which is of Greek origin? You would not even be able to say telephone without it. And the conclusion is, when your benefactor is a constant reminder of your inadequacies, it is so unbearable that even if you strike him from the face of the earth, you will be haunted by the truth of what Henry James Maine once said in his Cambridge speech. Except for the blind forces of nature, nothing in this world moves that is not Greek in its origin. Thank you for listening.